Everyone online makes fall fishing seem so easy to catch numbers of fish as well as giant fish every single trip out, but I'm here to tell you that's not always the case. Fall fishing can be extremely tough, but in today's video I want to share with you guys some tips and tricks that are figured out to maximize these tough days on the water to hopefully help you guys catch a couple extra fish. Now when we start talking about fall fishing, I just want to reassure you guys that if you have days that are challenging on the water, you are not alone. You guys watch my videos and you see me hammer on fish, especially these past couple, but what you don't see are the countless hours in between bites. The 12 hours after I hammered on a school of fish that I spent only getting one or two bites throughout the day. Fall fishing can be very challenging and in today's video I really want to break down some things that I figured out and hopefully give you guys some tips that will help you guys maximize these challenging days on the water and maybe catch a couple extra fish. Now if you guys don't know who I am, my name is Benjamin Nowak and this channel is really dedicated to sharing with you tips, trips, and experiences that I have on the water to make you better anglers. So if you guys enjoy that style of content, consider subscribing to the channel because it'll let you know when I post more videos just like this one. But without further ado, let's dive into these fall fishing tips. One of the things that I think is often misrepresented about the fall especially as we talk about the shallow bite, is how tough this can be. And in today's video, I really want to break down that shallow water section of the lake. Now, when I'm talking shallow water, especially up here in the north, I'm talking less than 15 foot. That, for me, is what I would consider pretty shallow. That's where I can target cover, such as grass or boulders, really effectively with a variety of different techniques. And so, to me, less than 15 foot of water is really shallow. Now, really, depending on where you live, shallow is going to be relative. But when I'm considering shallow water, I'm thinking of areas where these fish can push up in the pre-spawn, basically through the spawn time of year. During the fall, these are the areas that I'm going to spend most of my time because this is where you're going to find that biggest congregation of fish and in my opinion is the most fun time of year to catch them. But it can be very challenging. So look in those areas similar to where you catch them during the pre-spawn and spawn and to me that's where I'm going to be focusing my efforts shallow during the fall. One of the things that I believe is there's four main reasons that the shallow bite can be really tough. Number one is that these fish get in small pods. And I'm not talking pods of 50 to 100 plus fish. Typically these are small 5 to 20 fish pods and they're located on a very small area. So what I mean by this and why this is important is that once you get a bite, you really need to stop and make repeated casts to that area or that piece of cover and structure. Don't just catch a fish and keep on moving down the bank. During the fall, these fish are going to be located in small key areas. So stop and pick that area apart. Most guys miss some of these really key fall spots because they buzz through a spot. They catch one or two and keep on moving instead of sitting there and maximizing that bite. Building on that point too is that these fish are located on very specific pieces of cover and structure. So you might have a giant vast flat with a bunch of boulders on this and there's one sweet spot on that flat. I experienced this a few weeks ago where I was fishing down a flat with crankbait and I was letting the wind drift me along and I got one bite. And that one bite keyed me in onto a very small area where a bunch of fish were located. So understand that while there's a lot of stuff that looks good, there's only sweet spots where these fish really want to be congregated. And why that is, is going to depend on your body of water and maybe you'll never figure it out, but there are going to be small key sweet spots where these fish want to hang out and live. And so don't overlook or don't underestimate how small a spot can be. This also is not really a time of year that I'm going to spend a ton of time on the motor, especially graphing in shallow water. Now, while that might be important to locate some of these larger areas, to find the sweet spot, you almost have to fish through it. So that's going to be a lot of time spent on your trolling motor. It's going to be a lot of time spent really fishing through areas to understand why fish are there so you can then start to pattern it around your body of water. But don't be afraid to spend time on your trolling motor this time of year because that's the most effective way to locate the sweet spots by just fishing through it and looking for a couple of bites. The other thing that I've noticed is that these fish become extremely smart during the fall. They've seen baits all season long and while they're more apt to bite moving presentations, they're also not stupid. So tricking these fish to bite your presentation is going to be increasingly harder. You have to do a better job of matching the cadence they want, of matching the size or color of bait that these fish are really dialed into. So you have to really trick them to bite a lot more it seems. You could be around one of the best schools of fish, 
But if you can't get that fish to fire, you may never ignite the school that makes or breaks your day. In fact, there's a really funny story, maybe not so funny, but last fall, Nathan and I were fishing a spot and it was a pretty well-known community hole. Well, we get out there and we watch a boat about 150 feet away from us lighting up this school of fish. We ended up finding out that guy caught 32 pounds while we sat there and watched him and we caught one fish that was four and a half pounds. So it could be something as small as him throwing a different presentation or him being on the key sweet spot where those fish were located that day. But I'll tell you, I will never forget that day on the water watching someone else light up a dirty 30 while I'm sitting there struggling to get bit. So just understand you got to change up your presentation. You have to trick these fish to bite. And sometimes you really have to be on the sweet spot to get these fish to fire. But once you get one of those fish to go, it seems like it ignites that school and it starts them up and really turns around your entire day. And the fourth reason that the fall can be a really challenging time of year is constantly changing water temperatures and water clarities. Obviously, this is a time of year where you're really in transition. For me, the fall is all about transition. The weather's changing. The water's changing. You have the turnover still in effect. You have changing water clarities really quickly and cooling temperatures. That's all going to make fish more and more challenging to get to bite. You also have to get out of your mind that fish were there yesterday, so they have to be there today, and just be willing to cover new water. But all four of those things are really what play into making the shallow bite so tough during the fall. But don't be discouraged because now I'm going to share with you guys some ways that I've figured out to maximize these tough days on the water. And really over the next couple of points, the big key here is going to be stealth and it's going to be using finesse. And I talk about power fishing a lot. This is one of my favorite times of year to power fish for these smallmouth, but there's going to be days on the water where you have those challenging conditions, those changing water temperatures or clarities, or maybe you just can't buy a bite where you have to slow down and you have to go finesse and you have to be stealthy to get these fish to trigger. The first thing that you're going to notice with me during the fall months, when I pick up a finesse rod, it's going to be a lot longer. I'm gonna use a lot longer gear, lighter line, smaller baits to be able to make longer casts and get that bait away from the boat to trigger those fish to bite. In fact, behind me, I have two or three seven foot six rods and then I have a seven foot one drop shot rod and those are really finesse pieces of gear for me. Now, as we talk about stealth with the gear, we're also gonna talk about stealth with your trolling motor and with your electronic setup. I know a lot of you guys like to run your trolling motor on high and I talk about covering water quite a bit but this is one of the times a year where you want to slow that trolling motor down. You want to limit the amount of noise that you're making so you don't spook these fish. As I mentioned before, these fish are very, very intelligent. Especially as you get into that shallower water, these fish are very aware of what's going on around them. So if you're stomping around and your trolling motor is on high and you're making a lot of noise, you might catch some fish, but I think you're missing a lot of bites that you would otherwise trigger by being quiet and stealthy with your approach. Turn that trolling motor down. Turning your transducers off if you don't need them. Slowing down, changing your approach, using stealth with both your gear and your trolling motor will help you be more effective during the fall. Now, obviously, we talked about the longer gear, but we're also going to talk about the reason for that, which is making longer casts. You really want to separate yourself from that bait. And so when you roll up to an area during the fall, you don't want to get right on that spot, especially if you think fish are going to be living there. You want to make the longest cast you can possibly make while still effectively presenting your bait to those fish. This is something I'm a big advocate of and I've learned over the years. You don't want to roll up to a spot or get too close to an area or basically burn fish before you even get to make a cast to it because you rolled up too close to it. Boat positioning, and my buddy Nathan taught me this, is extremely important. You want to come in in an area, be really stealthy, and you want to make the longest cast possible, present your bait to those fish without them really even knowing you're there. So this could be using current and wind to your advantage, helping you move into an area, or helping you make a longer cast with the wind at your back with these light finesse presentations to get that bait and touch these bass. Mark Zona says this a lot, but you don't want to reach out and touch them. You really want to make that long bomb cast, get that bait away from you, especially in cleaner water situations, so they see the bait without feeling your presence. And then finally, be fast, but be thorough. Know that you're covering the areas in high percentage spots as best you can, but you also don't want to get stuck on an area just because it looks good. If you're not getting bit there, there's probably not a ton of fish in that area, so you can keep on moving. Just know that you cover the high percentage locations in that area 
I really want to wrap this up by talking about some of my favorite approaches during the fall and finesse techniques to get these fish to go. I've done some videos in the past talking about my power fishing approaches and power fishing baits, but I really want to slow down and talk about these finesse approaches and ways that I trigger more fish to bite. The first one as I'm going to cover water is going to be a finesse underspin or a ball head with a small minnow style bait on the back. Now this is a Great Lakes finesse drop minnow. It's a 275, so it's a very small bait. Um, but this really matches the forage effectively and it will trigger fish to come look at this bait and bite. It matches the size of the young of the year bait that they're feeding on, but it also stands out and has a nice presence in the water. If that weather does slick off, I don't really like to throw the blade, so I'll just throw a ball head with a small minnow presentation or I'll even pick up a marabou jig. And just like in the spring, I'm basically using this technique to cover water and locate where fish are living or locate areas that fish seem to be setting up on. Now the rod that I'm throwing that on is a TFO 7.6 medium light. It allows you to reach out, get that bait away from the boat, and also loads up really nicely to launch this bait. You want to get as much distance as possible because this 8 ounce jig head or a 332nds if you're throwing a marabou jig, you want to reach out and touch those fish, get that bait away from you. And with this long rod, this medium light action, you can do that. And then I'm fishing it on 8 pound test braided line to 6 pound test fluorocarbon. And that is my go-to setup. And then I fish it on a slow speed gear ratio, 5 speed spinning reel. I really like that underspin or ball head minnow to cover water, but once I locate fish, I'm gonna pick up a small bait, like this eighth ounce ball head with a Great Lakes Finesse Flat Cat, or like a small Ned Rig presentation that I can slowly drag through the area. The reason I like this presentation is it's so small. That is a 2.1 inch bait, and it's a very small natural presentation. And then with that eighth ounce jig head, it kind of glides and just barely noses into the bottom. This to me is a really effective approach once you know fish are in a spot and you just want to trigger them to go and ignite that school. Fishing a small bait like this flat cat can do a really good job of just getting you that first bite, that initial bite to trigger that school to fire. Similar to that last setup, I'm fishing this on a TFO 7.6 medium light rod. This is the Resolve series. It's a little bit more sensitive rod and the reason I like that is fishing that really light bite. You're gonna get a lot of pressure bites where that fish will just come up and kind of nose on that bait or sit on that bait. So this really sensitive rod is really important in feeling those light bites. And then I'm fishing it on high speed, six speed gear ratio reel, big spool capacity, eight pound test braided line, to six or eight pound test fluorocarbon. Really the big key here is using finesse with that presentation, get this bait away from the boat with that long rod, and then basically giving them a really small presentation to bite. But if you guys have watched the channel for any period of time, you know that I'm gonna have an OW sniper in my arsenal, especially during the fall. Last fall, I really started to understand this bite a lot more effectively, but this bait just gets a lot of bites. It falls quickly, it gets a reaction bite, but then you can also drag that bait along bottom and have it look like a goby or a crawdad. There's a big crawdad hatch that happens in October, and even a little bit into the end of October into November, when that water temp is around that mid to low 50 degree range, and those fish will key in on crawdads, and then obviously gobies are a major food source for smallmouth all year long. But this again is another do nothing style presentation. Drags along bottom is really natural. But one of the benefits of this is that you can really fish it quickly and it falls fast to trigger some reaction strikes. So this is a half ounce OW sniper. This is the sexy melon color. I also really like Mothman in the MB series, which is a lighter skirt material. And then this is a Duo Realis Wriggle ND. It's their new Ned bait, um, but it's made of that elastomer so it does have that stretchy buoyancy that's going to allow you to catch multiple fish on this presentation. And then during the fall, I'm gonna fish this on a spinning rod. This is a TFO Professional 7.6. Again, you're gonna see a theme, medium heavy. So it allows you to reach out, get that bait away from the boat, but that medium heavy is gonna load up into the rod and uh, give you a positive hook to land ratio. Then I'm fishing it on 10 pound test braided line to eight pound or 10 pound test fluorocarbon. Falls really quickly. You get the sensitivity that you really like from a spinning rod, um, but you get that fast fall with that lighter line. So that is probably one of my favorite ways to catch them when things get tough during the fall. And then when you talk about smallmouth fishing, you have to have a drop shot rigged up. And this is something I don't throw a ton during the fall, 
But when I know where fish are located and they don't want to bite one of those bottom presentations, there's still a group of fish that will feed up off the bottom during the fall. So a drop shot, typically with you know your 12 to 18 inch length leader, is going to be a big player for me when things really seem to slow down. Especially when things get glass, glass calm, when things get really, really clear and finesse and you have to really downsize, a drop shot is going to be a big player. You can also use this bait to dead stick next to boulders or next to pieces of cover on bottom. And it seems to trigger bites that other baits can't get to go. Also the bait that I've rigged up on there is the XI Baits Minobi. Um, it's a three and a quarter inch presentation so it imitates those young of the year bait fish really effectively. We have some really unique colors and I like to fish a perch style color this time of year especially when those fish are feeding up and that water's clean. So this clear perch color gets a lot of play from me basically from August through October when these fish are really keyed in on perch. And the other thing is that this is the only finesse rod shorter than 7.6. This is a 7 foot 1 medium light TFO Resolve, 8 pound test braided line with 6 or 8 pound test fluorocarbon and a high speed gear ratio spinning reel. So I really hope this video is going to give you guys the confidence you need to grind through those challenging days on the water. I hope it also gives you guys some understanding on places to start and things to look for when you're going out finesse fishing this fall because there are a lot of really effective ways to trigger fish to bite and maximize even the toughest days on the water. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to see some more fall tips, click this video right here. Punch my face right there to subscribe to the channel. It'll let you know when I post more videos just like this one. But go down there, subscribe if you're not already, and as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Take care, tight lines. God bless. Pursue your passion.